Greetings to all who've come to watch this video. I'd like to share something that the Lord has laid on my heart. It is, uh, I would call it a rapture correction warning. Uh, the church is anticipating the, their rapture by Jesus Christ as he promised to return and take them to, to be with himself. We call it the blessed hope. Uh, but there is a danger, and I want to share that today. I will be reading from the King James Bible which gives us a very clear warning, a sequence of events by which we can know when the rapture is going to happen, not the exact day, but the approximate time, very close. And even though the, the, the coming is soon, it is not tomorrow or in the next couple years. So please let me, uh, let me go through the scriptures and show you again from the King James Bible. I also want to say, as I'm going to go through this a little quickly, uh, I refer you, we're going to put a link in the description, hopefully, uh, to our blog, The Remaining Remnant. And the title of it is When the Lord Returns. It's at blogspot.com. Again, The Remaining Remnant. The title being When the Lord Returns at blogspot.com. So first we're going to go to the scriptures. When we look into the scriptures, we look into the gospels. Jesus is speaking of his second coming. Most specifically, anyway, in Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, and Luke chapter 17 and 21. And so we're going to go right now to Matthew 24. This is a very important piece here in 24.3. As Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? So you see, this is a, a, a very specific setting. The, private, the disciples are with him privately. This is not a general revelation uh, to the public. And so everything he's saying here, when he gives the description of those days, he's talking to the disciples. So they will be here during this time. But I'm going to jump, and I'm going to jump over to verse 29, and specifically focusing on verses 29 through 36. Let me read the first three verses here, 29, 30, and 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So you can see the King James is very plain. And the same thing is again, uh, let's say it's affirmed in Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 27. It also tells us it is after, it is after the tribulation of those days. And we typically associate the tribulation with the reign of the beast, the Antichrist. I don't know how you can get much, much more plain than this. All right. So let's keep going. In verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all those things be fulfilled. So there it is. We can know that the end is near, even at the doors. Jesus gave us a list of circumstances, things that would happen. When you see it, you'll know. It's not a question. Many times today, it is treated more like the church can't know anything. And this time is so important historically. Jesus wanted us to know. It's, the, it's no doubt the second most important event since creation was. The first you know, being without comparison, when Jesus came to give his life for our sins. But this is the turning of history as we have known it all along. And so here it says that we will know that the end is near at the doors, and again, that this generation is not going to pass away until all things are fulfilled. Sometimes you'll meet someone who will say, well, if we get together and pray, we can put this off. It won't happen. Oh, there's going to be a revival instead. That's not what the Bible says. So let's take it as truth from the mouth of God. 
Then in verse 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And this is just so important. Jesus is only telling us. It's important, though, that we cannot know the exact time. And he knew the false prophets would come and say, oh, he's coming on this day and in this year. He knew they would do that. And so when we hear people talking like that, we can automatically know that they are a false prophet or it's at least a false prophecy. We see groups like uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses or Seventh-day Adventists. I mean, they were built on false prophecies of the Lord's return. And uh, no matter what they did after that, that's a, that's a pretty bad foundation when you're directly contradicting uh, the Word of God. And so then we're going to our next point. So what withholds? What withholds until we get to this time? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. There's one more thing I wanted to add in terms of what we can know. I just wanted to read this, this passage from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 2 through 6. This is again affirming that Christians will know the time. For yourselves know perfectly, perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. So there you see it. It's written to believers. You know, we are not of the darkness, that the day should overtake us as a thief. This is also echoed in uh, Revelation 3.3. 3. In the writing to the church of Sardis, and Jesus is saying, If you will not watch, I will come on you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. So there you have it. If we are watching, we are ready. It's not going to overtake us as a thief. There are many believers today who see the bad things going on in the world, and they know that the rapture is, is getting close. But if you are looking for it to come first, you are set up to be deceived by the Antichrist, and it is not what the Bible plainly teaches us. So what withholds? This is what we're waiting for. In short, we're waiting for the revelation of the Antichrist. Who is the Antichrist? The believers will know, but most of the world will not know. They will take him to be God. They will take him to be Jesus. They will take him to be uh, the Jewish Messiah, the Muslim Messiah, uh, the Buddhist Messiah. He will unite all of the religions. And this is the scripture. We're going to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting with verse 3. I guess we'll go through 6. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there shall come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, references to the beast, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Very simple. We have the falling away first. That has been happening for a long time. Certainly over the last hundred years, maybe the last hundred and fifty years. Slowly, but it's been building. I can see certain events that, uh, that mark this time. But what we're looking for now is a revelation of Antichrist, and it will be a general revelation to everyone. It will not be something sp for a few special people. I have seen it at times uh, in videos, oh, God has shown me who the Antichrist is. And they are saying that because they think if they know, then Jesus can return. But this revelation, as you can see, he is posing as God. This is the beast who wants the whole world to worship him and to take his mark. Everybody's going to know. So don't worry about you're missing it and somebody else knows it. Uh, it's not going to happen. So what, is the, so what is the time frame then that we are looking at? Okay, now we see the revelation of the Antichrist. And again, we just read it from Matthew. After the tribulation of those days, and we associate the tribulation with the reign of the beast, Okay, but it gets more specific than that. So we look at it and we say, okay, how long? 
The reign of the beast is just over three and a half years. If we look in Revelation 13, 5, I think it describes it there as 42 months. But I found six other references to the three and a half year period. There were, uh, what do I have here? There were three in Daniel and three others in the book of Revelation. So just over three and a half years. Those references are in the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 25, 12, verse 7, and 12, verse 11. And then in Revelation, it is Revelation 11, 3, 12, 6, and 12, 14. They refer to the three and a half year period in different ways. And this is one of the ways in which we know, yes, it's going to be difficult to tell the exact day even then. So what Jesus said is absolutely true. But we will know when we see the revelation of Antichrist, we will know we're looking at a little more than three and a half years. In Daniel uh, 12, 11, I believe he refers to 1,290 days. These things are still somewhat of a mystery, but uh, there's no reference to, uh, to a seven-year tribulation. And so when is the return? What's going to be happening? Is there any more information? And the answer is yes. Of course, the, the typical thinking of uh, those sponsoring a pre-tribulation rapture are that the rapture will happen, and then you're going to have a seven-year tribulation period in which the beast comes into power, and after that, God will return and uh, judge the armies at Armageddon, and he will come and set up uh, his kingdom for a thousand years in Jerusalem. Let's listen to what Jesus says. In Luke chapter 17, verses 26 through 30, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it, just as if life was going to go on forever. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. It will be on the same day. And you can see this, I think you see it well in the example of Lot. When God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, and the angels came and Lot pled for the smaller city of Zoar, which was apparently somewhat nearby. But he wanted a city to flee to with his, his wife and his two unmarried daughters. And they said, okay, that will be spared. And it says that when Lot got to the gate of Zoar, God rained fire and brimstone down. And so you can really see that as God raptures the church. It is almost immediate, likely within the same hour, he is going to bring judgment at the Battle of Armageddon. I hope that you understand this video. I hope that you look into these things more for yourself. And if you still find it impossible to believe what I'm saying because you've heard this pre-trib rapture for so long, think of it this way. Prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Because you'd be crazy to think that I don't want to go sooner rather than later. But we need to be ready. And God is faithful. We will see his powerful hand. Do you remember what the scripture says? That those that do know their God will be strong and do exploits. Glory be to God and God alone. God bless.